everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2018 Mazda MX-5 Miata Club. Huge thanks to Mazda for providing me with this very cool little Miata to review for you guys today. So about the 2018 MX-5, well they made some really nice changes here to it for 2018. Uh, so the first uh, big change you can see on the outside here uh, is this dark cherry top which is now an available option. And uh, I think it looks really good here with the machine gray paint, uh, especially with this one as the BBS wheel package as well. So the black wheels, the arrow kit you get with the club uh, with the, you know, the nice front lip and uh, you know the other little uh, arrow pieces and just it just looks like a really nice combo all together. Um, and I know the dark cherry top, uh, you know, some people aren't a huge fan of the coloring of it. I personally love it though. I think it looks great. But this one just adds a little bit of extra aggression here with the club uh, trim, like I said, with that aero package. Um, and overall, I just still really love the way the Miata looks. I think especially those taillights in the back uh, really stand out nicely here with the dark gray paint. And uh, overall, I think it's still just a really great looking little car. Right, so for the interior of the 2018 Mazda MX-5 here, well obviously it's a small car so not a ton of space, but it's actually a really nice place to be. Uh, first thing though, sitting down in these seats, uh, these are the new Recaro seats you can now get uh, with this BBS Brembo Recaro package. So there still is the standard BBS Recaro package if you don't uh, want or need these uh, Recaro seats, but they're really nice to have. They're also heated as part of the package as well, and they have this uh, you know micro suede Alcantara type material to them, and feel really nice. They just have you know a little bit of additional bolstering you know they're not super racy seats and not too hard or anything like that um, and so they're not a huge difference from the standard Miata seats but they are nicely improved that I certainly think they're worth uh, you know the $700 upcharge or you know something around there for them um, and uh, you know I also do like the uh, cherry red uh, dark cherry red uh, piping here you have on them as well although it doesn't match perfectly uh, so there's that uh, piping and then there's the stitching um, that's all supposed to match this top um, but my wife went on a a mini rant for about three minutes about how the stitching doesn't match the top and it was driving her crazy so if you're sensitive to things like that um, you might not like you know the stitching uh, especially on the door panels is almost like magenta in color uh, as opposed to the darker uh, cherry type uh, look but anyway uh, moving on here like I said really great seats next to the steering wheel and the Miata which is really a, a really wonderful unit very similar to a lot of the other Mazda models um, but that's okay because it's a wonderful wheel just a nice thin wheel uh, you know not too thick not trying to be beefy or anything it's a stark contrast from the uh, wheel in the 124 uh, Abarth uh, you know which is uh, the sibling to this vehicle this is a lot thinner uh, and I don't think you need all that extra heft you know especially not in a small little car like this you have a few basic buttons on it some real metal trim which feels really great um, you have the more of that stitching uh, that is a nice contrast color there uh, but just a really nice 9 and 3 grip uh, just a really great steering wheel to use next to the gauges here in the MX-5 which are simple and wonderful very similar once again to some other Mazda products but that's a wonderful thing because they're all great uh, you know front and center you have a large tachometer there which looks great it also has a little gear indicator there in the bottom right corner of it uh, and then you just have an analog speedometer and then you have uh, some uh, very uh, old school looking uh, digital readouts there on the left uh, you know not color or anything like that but hey it gets the job done uh, you don't need it to be overly fancy that just adds cost coming over to the center of the dashboard here it's again refreshingly simple another new update here for 2018 though is all models get this seven inch uh, infotainment screen as standard it used to be uh, standard on the uh, club and grand touring models but not the sport base model uh, but now even the base model gets this new screen uh, and it's it's still good it's the same screen you've had in the past couple of years um, and it's okay you know Mazda's infotainment system doesn't have have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is a sore exclusion especially here for you know by 2018 model your car is a, a lot of the manufacturers have adopted that Mazda still has not unfortunately um, otherwise it's just a basic screen uh, you know all it does is you know your Bluetooth for uh, audio and for phone you have you know uh, all the different audio sources outside of uh, you know any kind of CarPlay or Android Auto thing but it still has you know you have integrated uh, new Pandora radio as well as uh, Sirius XM it's HD radio for FM of course uh, and then you know also, you have Bluetooth audio streaming and USB sources, and still a CD player as well, which you'll see uh, behind your uh, right shoulder there. Um but anyway, you know, it's good. I also do like that it does have a touchscreen uh, capability in addition to having this little controller down here. Now, the touchscreen only works whenever you're not moving, um, and then whenever you are moving, use the controller, which makes sense. Um, and these controllers, by the way, are really nice. Nice actual metal, have a nice resistance to them, and feel great. A couple shortcut buttons there, um, and then you have a nice little volume knob, which also uh, has a really nice resistance to it. It is a little bit of a reach back. If you're, you know, a larger boned person, you might uh, be annoyed with the reach for this. Uh, but, you know, be me being 5'9", uh, 
um, you know, it's nothing uh, too uncomfortable. Although I, I would welcome a standard volume knob up right up front here, but uh, you know, that's just being nitpicky. Otherwise, you have your climate controls, which are still the standard uh, controls. Only the Grand Touring gets the auto climate, um, but again, not a big deal there. Uh, and then you have your heated seat controls, and that's it. So very just wonderfully simple again for a small little sports car. It's what you would expect in the Audi here, um, but thankfully they haven't tried to make it overly complicated, and I still just love the layout of the interior. Storage space in the Miata uh, is limited, but maybe not as limited as you might think. So uh, first off in the doors, you really have nothing outside of you know your little grab handle. It has a little spot there. Otherwise, though, coming over to the center here, you have this uh, pretty deep, um, but you know it's a uh, shallow, but it goes far back uh, opening here in the middle. Um, and uh, you have the two USB jacks and auxiliary jack in there as well, which is nice to have that. But you have this other blank space that I'm not sure what that's for. That would be really nice to have a power outlet there. Oddly, one strange thing about the Miata is the only actual traditional power outlet in this vehicle is all the way down here in the passenger uh, footwell. And it's a reach. You actually have to like get down in there. You can't even easily access it from reaching over. You have to get over to the passenger side and find a way to plug your thing in. So, you know, for dash cams, things like that, if you leave them plugged in, it's not a big deal. But if you're frequently plugging and unplugging a power outlet, uh, you know, device, that's going to be annoying. And then coming back, you know, you have this little uh, center armrest type thing, which actually has a nice bit of padding to it. Unfortunately, the uh, area surrounding it is very hard. And so, uh, you know, if you're not putting your uh, elbow far enough back, you're going to hit the hard part instead of the soft part. Other than that, though, it's a nice little cover there. And you open that up and you have a small little space that's uh, large enough to fit sunglasses as long as they don't have a bulky, you know, case on them. Um, you know, but something about that size, not large enough for a smartphone or anything like that, unfortunately. Um, and then you have your two cup holders, which have an interesting arrangement here you can have one uh, up front here there's a little spot there or you can remove it and have it back here with the other one um, and there's a little space there and you can have them uh, back there as well so a cool little bit of customization there with that you also like I said see your CD player there and then, you know, there's no uh, glove box in the Miata. So the only uh, space you have to store documents is actually back here. Uh, you open this, it's lockable as well, which is nice. Um, and then you have, you know, a large area that goes way far back there. It is cut off by uh, some other plastic piece there, unfortunately. But otherwise, you know, just a really large area there. And so good to have that. And if you're really desperate for even more storage space, actually behind both seats, there's another little space that you could maybe shove like a coat if you roll it up, you know, a little jacket like this or something uh, would fit in there stuffed um, or you know you just small little again just documents things like that uh, and so anyway nice to have those although it's not super convenient you know, since you have to move the seat forward um, but nice to have that little extra space so they try and help you out as much as possible here on the MX-5. Trunk space in the MX-5 is also actually pretty good it's better than stuff uh, that like the F-Type uh, it's a nice deep uh, trunk actually and so uh, you can fit a full week's worth of groceries in there I did um, and it was totally fine for that um, and you know because of that it's a very practical little uh, vehicle to run around in on a daily basis. All right, so start up and go for a drive. The MX-5 has the same typical Mazda key, which is a really nice thin little key. Uh, has some metal buttons on it and just is a really great key. So anyway, of course, it's keyless entry and push button start here. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button and it revs to life. I love, uh, the Miata is the only car I know of where uh, whenever you start it up, it revs to like just over 2000 RPMs on startup. It's just a really cool little fun touch. All right, so sitting off in the 2018 Mazda MX-5 Miata. Well, it's just a lovely thing to drive, especially with the top down. I really love convertibles. And this one, you just are so exposed to the elements. It's so small. Um, and so it's just a really fun experience. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, normal driving things, uh, it's really easy to drive too. This manual transmission the clutch is very predictable, easy to learn and uh, get adjusted to, and so I think it's a great car for those learning to drive manual as well. I think it's a really easy manual transmission. You know, the uh, all the gates are really well defined here for the manual, and very very easy to you know it's stop and go and all that kind of stuff with a nice light clutch. Other things, visibility is excellent here in the MX-5, of course, especially with the top down. You have nice thin A pillars, uh, you know, and of course very easy to see out of the sides and out of the back. But even with the top up, now I've been driving this car already for about a week. Um, and and uh, we, even with the top up, uh, you know, it's pretty good visibility wise. The only two strange things are, you know, of course, that uh, there isn't any kind of uh, easy visibility over your right shoulder. So at certain intersections, if I'm looking over my right shoulder, I kind of have a blind spot there where I normally
normally you have a quarter window or a rear window, you know, to look through and in any other vehicle. And another thing is there is no backup camera in the Miata, which I think is a really strange exclusion because I thought it was federally mandated that you had to, by law, have a backup camera, but the Miata does not have a backup camera, and apparently they never have had one. Uh, and so I'm not sure why there's that exclusion because otherwise this car is equipped with an optional package which has blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. So that's nice to have. Um, but yeah, kind of strange to not have a backup camera, but again, it's such a small car. It shouldn't really be a big issue, especially with the top down. All right, so let's turn that onto this back road here and see how it does. I've turned off trash control and uh, yeah, so let's give it a go. Here we go. <laughs> cylinder engine um, that does 155 horsepower and 148 pound-feet of torque. Now I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but this car only weighs 2,332 pounds. So that means there's not a whole lot of weight to get up and go. So because of that, zero to 60 time for the Miata is only 6.2 seconds, which is, uh, you know, plenty quick. That's right up there with, you know, your GTIs and all that type of stuff. Uh, might even be a little quicker than some of those. So I mean, it's really really good. I mean, that's even faster than the 124 Abarth, which has more power, you know, the sibling to this vehicle. Um, but it's just the way this Skyactiv motor is so torquey. I know the numbers just lie and lie with these Mazas because they feel so much quicker than the numbers suggest. And uh, I think the gearing really is, uh, you know, pretty nice and short as well. So that, you know, it's really punchy. Throttle response is really great. So the second you get into the gas, you just get a nice little jolt. And um, yeah, it's just, it really has to, a fun experience that's just a absolute blast and also has a nice little growl to it as well that I really like. I mean it's not crazy or anything and of course you can go to the aftermarket if you want something louder but I think it's actually got a really nice little tone to it. One thing I will say though is even with the top up uh, it is a little bit noisy you know you certainly get a lot of road noise and even through that top it seems like it's pretty thin just the way that everything gets through it sound wise um, but it's okay this car is about experiencing the elements and you really get to take everything in you're not isolated from anything and so yeah sure if it's your daily driver maybe you know if you really want a whisper quiet ride this might not be the best but I think you know for those that are going for a Miata they're going for fun and I think uh, this certainly uh, just gives you the full experience you know and uh, I just I love of the, the elemental feel of it. The only thing about the Miata I will say is I wish it had a slightly higher red line. Now it is better than the uh, Albarth 124. That's uh, I think 300 uh, RPM less. This say, say is 6800 for the red line, uh, but I just wish it would go to seven or a little over. But anyway, we're coming up onto some corners here. Let's see how it handles. So it handles pretty good, but the weird thing is these tires, these Bridgestone tires are only 205 wide and they don't have a lot of grip. That's the only thing I'm noticing is the chassis is more than capable of, you know, just slinging you around these little corners, but I just feel like there's a lack of grip. Um, even with this uh, Brembo BBS package, it's just the tires are the weak link. Now, I think if you were to put some stickier tires, maybe some Michelin Pilot, uh, you know, Super Sports or Sport 4s on these, uh, maybe you'd have some better grip because I think that's the only thing that's missing. And maybe they're trying to go for the BRZ type thing where it's a little more tail happy and a little more loose and it's set up whenever you have, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, slight, slightly slicker tires, but I'm just wishing for a little more grip. That's the only thing I can complain about. Otherwise, it's actually nice and flat. Now, the previous ND Miata that I re reviewed was a Grand Touring model a couple of years ago, and that one um, didn't have uh, the same flat planted handling that this does. And I think it's just this you know, springs and stuff with the club package. The club package is the only uh, trim level where you get the upgraded sport tuned suspension, the Bilstein uh, uh, shocks. Uh, you also get a strut tower brace. Um, and uh, I think one or two other things, there's an engine sound enhancer. Um, and you know, so those things all help um, to make it a little flatter. And overall, I think this is my favorite of all the uh, Miata 124 variants. Now the Abarth uh, 124, I think handles a little flatter um, but this has a little bit of the drama built into it while still being very planted. Um, and I think this 
I like the Club uh, Miata better than the 124 just because you have the punchier engine. I love the Snatch and Aspirate engine. Uh, the 124 all bar has a very limited uh, power band before that turbo runs out of steam. Whereas this, you can, it's really progressive. The entire way through it's torquing, the entire way through it pulls hard, and you can really exploit more than, you know, 2,000 RPMs like you can in the, uh, in the 124. Other things, though, that are wonderful about the MX-5 are the very direct steering that you have. Now, it's not quite as fast as like an Aframeo Giulia or anything like that, but it is just really perfectly weighted. It's, you know, uh, not too heavy, not too light. It's just right. Oh, there's a nice RX-7. Um, anyway, and it's just really a nicely weighted uh, steering setup here uh, that just feels really good and appropriate for the MX-5. Other things now, you have these uh, Brembo brakes, and now it's been two years since I experienced the ND Miata, um, you know, that had the uh, standard brakes. This one with the Brembos, if I stomp on them, it's, it slams me to a stop pretty quickly, but it doesn't feel like a drastic difference from the standard brakes uh, from my memory, uh, again. But uh, yeah, so, you know, pretty good brakes there though, of course. And I think, you know, with the slightly larger wheels that you get here with the uh, BBS and Brembo packed, I think the wheels alone are probably worth the upcharge. But of course, you could do some of that stuff in the aftermarket as well if you'd like. But yeah, like I said, I've already had this vehicle for almost a week, but I'm gonna go drive it on all of my favorite back roads, and I'll come back and give you guys my final fuel economy and my final thoughts on uh, the Miata here. All right, so I've been driving the 2018 MX-5 for a little while longer here, and uh, it's just such a fun thing to drive. It really, really is. There's a reason why these things are, you know, famous for uh, being the fun sports car, the fun little roadster that everyone can afford. It's really great that they've kept them affordable. Um, and, you know, there's very few things that I can nitpick about it. I mean, one thing that became more and more apparent the more that I use these brakes is that the, uh, the brake pedal travel is just a more travel than I would like. I wish it was a little more immediate with its grab, uh, but the brakes do feel pretty good. Um, I still just wish these tires had more grip. That is the only thing I think just swapping tires and maybe like a fluid change for the brake fluid uh, to something a little sportier would really help to uh, go a long way into making this feel like an absolute go-kart because I think they artificially like lowered the limits of this vehicle in order to you know make it feel like you're on the edge more because uh, a car that's only 2300 pounds should have a little more agility in my opinion going around these corners and stuff and like I said I think that's just basically the tires because everything else in this vehicle is set up so well it's so flat uh, the steering is great you know and the handling is still phenomenal um, but it's just yeah, I think it could be even better with better tires um, Otherwise, though, I mean, very easy to rev match the downshifts. I love how quickly this engine revs up in general. Um, it's just an absolute blast. <laughs> just definitely a fun little daily driver or a fun little weekend car, you know, and you can just go out and do things you can't do in your average 4,000 pound car. But I mentioned how, you know, Mazda's has continued to keep the MX-5 affordable, and that's certainly true. You know, the base one's still just starting the low, or in the high $20,000 range, and then, you know, this one is a low 30, right, right over $30,000 here for the club trim. Um, now this one, they didn't have a window sticker for me because this was like a brand new car that basically they dropped off for me. But uh, this one should be right under 35,000, uh, or maybe right at 35,000, because the Brembo BBS and Recaro package is almost $4,500 on its own. And then like I said, the other options this one has are the dark cherry top, and then it also has the blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. Um, so I'm not sure how much that adds extra to the cost, but um, you know, and then you go up to the Grand Touring, and basically that just gives you the navigation, um, and I think one or two other things, like, well you get the Napa leather seats now for 2018 that are also heated, which is a nice thing to have too. Um, but honestly, you know, I think this club model is the, uh, the sweet spot because you still get also the Bose stereo, which is something I'll briefly mention. I mean, this vehicle obviously is very noisy um, and the stereo still isn't very powerful, even with these Bose speakers. And there's even speakers within the headrest, um, which is kind of cool because when you're having a phone conversation, a Bluetooth audio uh, you know, thing, it'll actually just play it only through the headrest speakers, which is kind of cool. It's almost like you have the phone up to your ear, which is something I've never experienced before in a car. Um, and so that's kind of cool. But you know, all those things combined, all those speakers are still not as strong as I would like, and I gotta crack, crank this stereo up to well over halfway in order to get some decent sound out of it at uh, any kind of reasonable speed. 
But yeah, at its roughly $35,000 price point, I think this is still a phenomenal value. Now, no, it's not going to be as cheap as, uh, you know, your BRZ or your 86. Um, but, you know, those, uh, to me, now I've owned a BRZ for a, a couple of years in the past, and there was a lot of fun, but this feels a little more fun to me. This engine has more low-end torque, um, and it just feels lighter still than even the already light BRZ. Um, and so, you know, I actually think I actually prefer this just a little bit more, although I do like the higher red line there, the BRZ and whatnot. The last great thing about the MX-5 I want to mention though here before I go is the fuel economy. Now these are rated at 26 in the city, 33 on the highway for combined average of I think like 28, 29. Anyway, I was really impressed that in my real world fuel economy here, uh, I drove this vehicle about 155 miles um, and it's still technically kind of like on a break-in or something because it's you know, only got 700 miles on the odometer. And anyway, I was still getting 27 and a half miles per gallon with almost no highway driving. Very, very little, just a sample how things sound at highway speeds and that's it otherwise it's been straight city back roads carving kind of driving 27 and a half mpg very rarely does a car do better than its city rating uh, in my uh, driving whenever i have press vehicles so for this to beat it even with how much i've been driving it hard is really impressive It's a joy to rev match your downshifts. It's a joy to dodge potholes, uh, which we're experiencing a lot of here currently. Um, and it's just a fun in every single way. Uh, just a really fun little companion to have here, and I really enjoyed my week with it. So anyway, huge thanks once again to Mazda for providing me with this MX-5 to review for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts on the 2018 Miata and the few changes they made. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.